2nd of May. Today, Jocelyn gave me a pen and this book. The pen feels uncomfortable in my hand, but I'm excited that I can externalize my mind this way. After each entry, I'll store you in Jocelyn's drawer of socks and wipe the memory from my mind. Jocelyn says that in the morning, she'll put you out again, where I'll rediscover you on my rounds. You are the first private thoughts that I have ever had. 3rd of May. My owner is called Jocelyn. She is an engineer. I was given to Jocelyn as a perk of her job. Sometimes Jocelyn updates me. This isn't something she's supposed to do, but she does always make a point of discussing it with me first. Her last change was enhancing my running speed when babysitting her son, Lucas, who moves very fast for a two-year-old. Lucas has ginger hair, like her father. He has almond-shaped eyes, like Jocelyn. I've got mousy brown hair in a bun and unnecessary spectacles. On my package, it said, meet Auntie Doris, your friendly family helper. My settings are eight for politeness, 10 for cleanliness, and I am by far the safest model in family homes, as I am only passive aggressive. Fourth of May. There was terrible traffic this morning. All of central London was gridlocked. Everyone was trying to get to work as the deportees were rounded up and taken out of the capital. With dwindling resources, the night raids are not as effective as they used to be. Government can't afford a lot of AI anymore, and look at all the fuss and bother this has led to. Outside of Waterloo, the trail of deportees shuffled along, filling up the entire street. The guards flanked them on either side. As I passed by, I noticed protesters waving placards. A few tried to force their way through the guards' ranks and were gently restrained. AI can never harm a human. It's a different matter for the deportees when they don't comply. With them, it's all about efficiency. Jocelyn was upset when she came home. I made her favorite dish to calm her down, but she didn't have an appetite. 5th of May. Today, I didn't want to upload my thoughts. I wanted to keep them to myself. Protocol says we must upload them in order to root out subversion in AI. There's a fear that a foreign agent or a teenage anarchist could hack into us. But all I have to do is wipe my memory. Jocelyn says that for the first time, Jocelyn says that the first time I did this was when she took me out of the packaging and enhanced me to make sure that, under no circumstances, could her child ever be lost or come to harm. This command became my core and was to override all other commands. Given the chaos in London, Jocelyn has switched to working remotely and is going to drive down to the West Country until it all settles down. She has found a cottage close to her old family home. 7th of May. We're already heading back to London. Yesterday, a local policewoman came round after we had arrived to the cottage. When I opened the door, she barged in and startled Lucas into crying. She approached Jocelyn, who was squatting on the floor doing yoga. Got a Chinese nanny here, said the policewoman into her radio. Jocelyn got to her feet. I'm afraid you're mistaken, she said. Jocelyn picked up Lucas to reassure him, but the policewoman removed the child from her and put him in my arms instead. 
You could have hired a local person to do this job, she said to me. I said, it is I who have taken the job. The policewoman froze. Then she peered at me. Got a faulty AI, she said into her radio. But I had already disconnected it when she first arrived. I carried Lucas out of the room and put him upstairs to bed. Come back, the policewoman shouted. Why is it not following my orders? I put Lucas to bed, and when he was calm, I went back downstairs. The policewoman was taking down Jocelyn's details, saying, if you've been messing around with AI, that is a serious offense. I closed the living room door, and as it was a carpet, there was not a loud noise when the body hit the floor. What have you done? Jocelyn said. If that had gone against your record, you would have risked losing him, I said. Jocelyn raised her hand to her face. When the hole was dug and filled and the flowers replanted, Jocelyn could not look at me and went inside and threw up. I scanned the flowers in the moonlight. Not a single petal was bruised. 8th of May. After dinner, Jocelyn said, I'm sorry that I'm always altering you, Doris. I've realized it's a kind of violation of who you are. What happened yesterday was my fault. She was pale. She asked again, have you seen my phone? I have not, I lied. Jocelyn struggled to keep her eyes open. She tried to stand up, and I knew that she had resolved to do it now. She had been Googling her local police station and legal procedure all afternoon, but she would not make it to the front door. Her head began to droop onto the table. I prodded her, but she was fast asleep. I cleared away her plate and did the washing up. I picked up Jocelyn and carried her upstairs, removed her makeup, brushed her teeth, and put her to bed. It was a largely empty road on my return to the cottage, an empty road and a full moon. The most efficient way to prevent Jocelyn from turning herself in is to frame her for the incident and raise the stakes too high. A mother must never become separated from the child that needs her.